basically saying is that we're effectively run in this country via the Democrats, via, via our corporate oligarchs, by a bunch of childless cat ladies who are miserable at their own lives and the choices that they've made. And so they want to make the rest of the country miserable, too. And it's just a basic fact. You look at Kamala Harris, Pete Buttigieg, AOC, the entire future of the Democrats is controlled by people without children. And how does it make any sense that we've turned our country over to people who don't really have a direct stake in it? Who knew that shaming cat ladies would be so controversial in 2024? Well, it is. And what J.D. Vance has said forecasts the future infusion of the red pill into mainstream politics, as I've been predicting for some time. It's no secret that politics is increasingly polarized along gender lines with men moving to the right and women moving to the left. And upon here, but upon hearing things, the typical conservative fear is that you're scaring the hose and that this will cause issues electorally for the Republican Party or the right generally. And it's always good to be conscious of optics, don't get me wrong, but these conservatives raising these fears have inadvertently found themselves on the side of the Meghan McCain's of the world. Here she is tweeting, I have been trying to warn every conservative man I know. These JD comments are activating women across all sides, including my most conservative Trump supporting friends. These comments have caused real pain and are just innately unchristian. This is not who we are. So in other words, now we can't call a spade a spade just because it might hurt some women's feelings. According to the neocon Meghan McCain. But these sorts of comments made by Vance and others probably aren't actually pushing all that many women away from the right. In fact, these comments are more like a real reaction to the actual behavior that women are exhibiting already. The actual behaviors and attitudes that your average woman unfortunately has out there in the world. This is going to be a hard truth to swallow for some of these trad cons, but single women are already basically a lost demographic for the right. Worrying about married suburbanites? Much more relevant. Will JD's comments scare them, though? You know, do these married suburbanites actually identify that strongly with the cat ladies? That's an important question, which I don't believe has an answer yet. A brief viewing of what was apparently the largest Zoom meeting in history, which was held recently, can give us a good idea of what the most politically conscious and active women in our society are currently thinking. Uh -huh. Ariel Fodar, affectionately known as Mrs. Frazzle to her combined audience of over 1.5 million followers, is here to help gentle parent us through this election. <laughs> Thank you. Hi, everybody. I am so honored to speak today. I am like shaking to just be among such incredible company. Um, we are here because as if you were here earlier, you've heard BIPOC women have tapped us in as white women to step up, listen, and get involved this election season. This is a really important time and we all need to use our voices and influence for the greater good. No matter who you are, you are all influencers in some way. So tonight, I'm going to share some do's and don'ts for getting involved in politics online and navigating the toxicity that comes with it. And spoiler alert, as much as the toxicity can come from the outside, it can come from us too. So first, don't isolate yourself. We can do our best work when we're in community together like we are tonight because the toxic feels smaller when we support each other. But don't make it about yourself. <laughs> As white women, we need to use our privilege to make positive changes. If you find yourself talking over or speaking for BIPOC individuals or God forbid correcting them, just take a beat and instead we can put our listening ears on. So do learn from and amplify the voices of those who have been historically marginalized and use the privilege you have in order to push for systemic change. As white people, we have a lot to learn and unlearn. So do check your blind spots. You are responsible for your algorithm, believe it or not. It's no secret that leftists and liberals don't care about family really at all. And this feminism, this mistrust and suspicion of men, this antinatalism is deeply rooted in women's minds. It literally takes being in a relationship with a man 
for a modern woman to hold any values at all that perpetuate civilization. Because these trad cons seem to be worried about women, specifically single women, getting offended by certain elements on the right saying things they think they might not want to hear. But what is the strategy for the great outreach to women? What's the big appeal going to be? What will incentivize women, especially single women, to move to the right? What's going to pull them in? Higher quality men. That's it. That's the draw. The traditional social patterns of our society have been totally disrupted, and women have been sold the lie that they can have it all. They can have the career and gain status and wealth, but then also have a rich family life. One of these things must take a back seat to the other. What will make them choose family over career? A confident, successful, competent man. And they'll choose this man regardless of what he says that may or may not actually be offensive and what his politics are. And a story that's relevant to this discussion has been blowing up all over Twitter recently. There's been a huge uproar over it. And it's the story of Ballerina Farm. This woman, Hannah Nealman, who is this influencer who's now at the center of this trad wife debate. She's this Mormon woman who married a, a billionaire or the son of a billionaire she married into the family of the guy who owns JetBlue Airlines or something. I don't know. Either way, her husband's loaded, basically. And she was about to go off and be a ballerina at Juilliard College in New York City and probably have some sort of performing arts career until this guy entered her life and they decided to get hitched. And she uh, decided to bear eight children to him, have a large family, start a very large family and live a traditional life on their 328 acre farm. And women all over Twitter were complaining about this. Really, I think they were surreptitiously attacking her for her choices rather than actually being concerned about her. Like, I gotta ask myself, has any of the women who are talking about this issue, have any of them ever been given the same offer where they actually had a man with that kind of wealth and resources who wanted to live a lifestyle like that with them? Probably not. So it stands to reason that they're bitter and jealous and they just want to malign her and say she's brainwashed rather than admit they wish this was them. You can see this allegedly conservative woman saying, sorry if I sound like a libtard, but pressuring your girlfriend of three months into dropping out of Juilliard to start a family when she's 20 is insane. Usually a woman giving up her career for family is a net positive, but this woman was talented, but never actualized her talent. The vast majority of women, or men for that matter, are not particularly special and aren't doing anything valuable by working in HR or accounting or whatever, but there's something extremely tragic about an elite ballerina's career being cut short. The woman in question could have finished her education, danced for a few years, and retired early enough to have children. She literally could have had it all. No, she couldn't have. Say that to all her eight children's faces. A few of those kids certainly wouldn't exist if she'd gone down the ballerina Juilliard career path, and she probably wouldn't even have the same husband either. Is their existence a tragedy? No, women can't have it all. They must choose between career and family. This is an unfortunate choice that all women must make. Men are not dumb. Men are not stupid. You're being manipulated. They don't want pearls. Pearl isn't a conquest. They want to take the Juilliard trained ballerina and make her dance in the field with the cows. There's no reason she couldn't be farming in Greece or wherever the fuck she wants to be, right? There's no reason she couldn't have kept her fucking ballet studio. But no, now it's for the children, right? There's no reason she couldn't have a nanny. There was no reason she couldn't have had a hospital birth and epidurals. She doesn't have these things because he doesn't want her to have these things. It was, is, and always will be about the subjugation of women. And for some reason, y'all just aren't grasping it. The cruelty is the fucking point, y'all. They know. They know. They fucking know. Men are not dumb. Men are not stupid. You're being manipulated. These are the fevered ramblings of a paranoid mind which is cooked up a conspiracy that men need to subjugate women and see them suffer and they have to take some successful Juilliard ballerina. Oh man, 
gotta take her and subjugate her because I couldn't just I couldn't just let her be. I couldn't just let her exist. It's it's not that any woman could ever want this life. It's not that any woman could ever actually have these values in common with her man. And just the framing too of this issue is so awful. This life itself is not subjugation. This this is highly rewarding for this woman. You just look at the tweets that some of these modern women made, and these are some really awful, scathing attacks, too. Saying she's brainwashed. Saying she's a baby factory. Saying she threw away her potential. Just, like, just imagine being one of this woman's kids and growing up and then somehow stumbling across these tweets about your mom from all those years back where you have all these random women saying basically that you are a mistake, you should have never existed, and she should have just girl bossed it up and been a ballerina. How's that going to make you feel? Like this is such a toxic conversation. But J.D. Vance making comments like the comments he made did not lead these women into thinking this way. Women are not offended into being feminists. They're propagandized. They're conditioned. Managing a household isn't seen as a respectable or valuable career anymore, and that is a serious problem. See, in this tweet right here, you have this Meghan McCain conservative, Ali, saying, quote, Why are unmarried women trending liberal? Question mark, question mark, end quote. Maybe it has something to do with how conservatives speak about them. I don't know. Just a shot in the dark. And then she's, quote, tweeting mostly peaceful Latinas who said, new TikTok trend using J.D. Vance's recording saying single childless cat ladies run the USA is being used by millennial women supporting Harris for president. This is the culmination of a two-year gender war that started with red pill creators and spilled into right-wing politics. First of all, the red pill is a reaction to fourth wave feminism and the impact that dating apps and social media have had on interpersonal relationships between men and women. So no, this conflict was not begun by red pill content creators two years ago out of nowhere, please. And if you're dumb enough to hear what J.D. Vance said and think that Harris is a better alternative, then you're too far gone. Like you were really never on board to begin with then. But let's take a quick look at the source material is that we're effectively run in this country via the Democrats, via, via our corporate oligarchs, by a bunch of childless cat ladies who are miserable at their own lives and the choices that they've made, and so they want to make the rest of the country miserable too. And it's just a basic fact. You look at Kamala Harris, Pete Buttigieg, AOC, the entire future of the Democrats is controlled by people without children. Homath and all his sagacity points out, the person in this video is not capable of understanding the consequences of her choices. What J.D. Vance is saying, quote, our government is pandering to people who don't support the growth of our nation instead of families, and that spells doom, end quote. What she hears, quote, girl power, yas, slay girls, save the world, end quote. What is she winning? What is she saving? Who is she fighting for? Does she even know? BIPOC people? That's probably the best answer we have. Here's another very relevant tweet. This woman says, This. People have responsibilities beyond the heteronormative nuclear family model. What about caring for parents? For neighbors? For pets? Yourself? What about all the other ways we are functioning? Human adults contributing to society beyond childbearing. These are the incredibly selfish and short-sighted views of a person who quite probably has a diagnosed mental illness. You know what really kills me about all this feminist posturing is that owning the right, in their view, just involves living a terrible life and making very poor life decisions. Like this, isn't, this is not going to be as fulfilling as starting a family and raising another human being. Like, come on. Who are you trying to fool here? And come on now, looking at the data, can we really say this woman is stress-free? Is she really happy and living her best life? Or, or, alternatively, is this just what it looks like when a woman is lashing out because she didn't receive proper male authority and guidance? She didn't have good male role models in her life 
So when anyone tries to hold her accountable, even slightly, like J.D. Vance, when anyone even makes a comment that she feels holds her accountable, holds up a mirror to who she is as a person, she feels threatened and feels the need to strike back, even if it causes her own destruction, even if it's harming her personally. So what the right needs to do is to defend and exalt motherhood, expose to other demographic groups just how anti-male the left really is, and to think of ways to promote male success in our society. Because all of feminism is geared towards undermining male authority and portraying it as unnatural and associating it with violence. Interestingly enough, we could learn from the NOI when they say that that's why, black man, you got to start coming to FOI class. Because let me tell you something, Muhammad don't raise no punks. No sissies, no faggots, and no chumps. Muhammad make men, Muhammad make warriors. Muhammad make soldiers. Muhammad make entrepreneurs. That's what Muhammad makes. All praise are due to Allah. No, you don't have to be rich in order for your woman to look up to you, but you gotta work hard. Did y'all hear me? You can't have a million dollar dream with a minimum wage work ethic. You can't have a million dollar dream with a minimum wage work ethic. Did y'all hear me? See, see, brothers, listen. The code of a man is that I'd rather be tired with money in my pocket than well rested and broke. That's the code of a real man. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? Money's not everything. Don't, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying money's everything. Money's not everything. But it is right up there with oxygen. It's right up there with oxygen. In my view, something like this should be the new entrepreneurial warrior spirit, the conquering ethos that must be cultivated in men on the right if any sort of conservative future is to be possible. Anyway, that's what's been on my mind lately. Hope you enjoyed this video. Please share it if you really liked it. That is the number one way you can help this channel. Also by leaving a comment and red channels will catch you in the next one.